Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. Welcome to this week's video where I'm picking up where I left off last week. So last week I focused on getting this bokeh styled background in. If you haven't seen that one, I'll pop the link in the screen and put it in the description below. So by now I filled in some of my underlayer and this time I'm using soft pastel sticks. Depending on the colors I would like, I might do this with some soft pastels or pan pastels, but for this one I chose to go with the soft pastel sticks, simply because I thought some of the colors I have in my collection were a perfect match. Just one thing, whatever you do, don't do this with your pencils for a size this big. I'm working on A3 and this would just have your pencils for breakfast. At this moment in time you might think that my bear blends in a little bit too much with the background. But when I go over this with my pencils, I find that there is enough difference. The fur of a bear is very thick and lengthy, which is also the case on the left side here. So I'm starting off with rather large strokes. They also have a slight bend to them depending on where you look, especially at the top part. Which is a good thing since this helps you overlap the background. Whenever you draw an animal portrait, make sure there is some overlap with the background, since this will have a much more natural look. When it came to the darker parts in the fur, I filled these up first, since it's always best to work from dark to light, at least when it comes to soft pastels. The fur here is very clumpy, so in order to achieve that, you really do need to take your time to build up your layers. When it comes to the lighter color, I'm using a color that has some red in it. This will make sure that the bear has a very warm feel to it. You'll also notice that my strokes are very squiggly. That is because the clumpy fur that I mentioned earlier. If you look closely at the reference picture, you'll notice that this is a patch of fur that must have gotten wet and then dried, which resulted in this clumpy look. So when I'm trying to get this down on paper, I'll do this by adding lots of layers of fur so that in the end you will have lots of strands grouped together. I also used soft pastels on some of the clumpiest to get a much thicker mass of fur. I used a lighter and a darker shade for this to illustrate more depth and afterwards I went over this with the pencils again. To finish this area I also used ivory. This is mostly towards the edges of the fur. Fur strands tend to be a little bit lighter towards the end as it thins out there a little bit. Starting on the nose right now. A mix of blue colors for my underlayer, some grayish blue as well as a very dark blue. And I even added some black already in the area where the nostrils will be. After this I used a very small blending stump so I would have lots of accuracy. Then I'm going to add a light blue for the highlight on the bottom part of the nose, but for the rest of the nose I glazed over it to darken it up and get it a little bit more to black values than blue ones. Next thing I'll do is my favorite part of the nose and that is to add some dots. I did this with a very light color, a black, a bright blue and even some orange. And after this I'll darken everything up again with some black. I'll also go down from the nostrils and add in that black line. Next to this you'll see me add these really tiny strokes next to this line because there is a little bit of fur over there. I'll just do this on the left side for now and the other side will be filled in when I do that part. I'm going back to the nose again for the finishing touches where I am just darkening and lightening things up. Basically I want to up the contrast between the values some more. You'll also see me use some orange very lightly but still. I'm doing this to reflect some of the brown orangey color of the bear surrounding the nose. Some reflective colors so to speak. For the lips I'm using a lot of the same colors as on the nose. Depending on where your subject is it's good to add in some more colors but this isn't really the case here. So I'll mostly stick to grays, blues and the occasional brown and orange like I did for the nose. And by using these blues and grays this also means that when I use black this stands out thus making it easier to show depth. And next off I'm starting with the muzzle. Since the fur mostly towards the nose is really short, you'll still be able to show. Next I'm starting with the muzzle. Since the fur towards the nose is mostly really short, you'll still be able to see some of the skin show through. So I start by adding some grey in there for my underlayer. I'm just keeping an eye out for the direction of the fur and I'll put my strokes down this way. And then I'll just blend this all out. As I blend this out, you'll see me add some more brown on the grey patch. One of the lovely things about pastel is that you can have lots of room to fix mistakes or just some small touch-ups. So in this case, even though I want some grey shine coming through, I felt as though it was too strong. So by adding a little bit of brown on top of this, I'm able to mute this back down. I'm also going to add some of the underlayer in more towards the top of the head. 
When you blend things out, also try to be aware of the direction of the fur. After I get in a big chunk of the underlayer, I switch to my pencils again. I'm starting with some ivory beneath the lips. Below this, I'm using a darker brown to start filling up the fur, but I'll switch to a pink tone rather fast. This is just to add in some of the fur to the right of the lips and when it helps with a smooth transition to the ivory that I'm using right above the lips. Here I'm working on the muzzle and this is where the hair becomes short. So I pay attention to shorten the length here. Also very important to get that direction here right. There isn't going to be that much fur on top here, so every layer will be very relatively visible in the end result. Having strokes here that are off will look bad in the end result. You also might think that it will look too bright, but as you can see, I also use a black in there which mutes it down. Here you can see the importance of the underlayer. You can use all the same colors in your top layers, yet each section will look different depending on the colors underneath. I skipped some of the progress to keep the length of this video reasonable. I'll jump in here with this light brown. This part of the bear is very warm, so when choosing browns, I keep this in mind. I pretty much go over the entire part where I've already done my underlayer with this one, and then I'll do the same with the black. The reason why this works so good when you are building your fur is the following. If you have a dog or a cat with some orange or brown fur, you can see this yourself. They don't have black fur, but they do have some black strands in there, giving them some grain. By switching it up between the brown and the black in this first layer, you'll mimic this. I will repeat this in future layers as well though, but this is mostly for your first layers to get that mix in. As I get more to the top layer, I will start to use lighter colors such as that pink, an orange and so on. Then I thought that I wanted to up the highlights in the middle there. This is where the crease is and this catches a lot of light. So in order to display the same amount of depth, you need to push the contrast here. As for the cheek, this is very much the same as the fur on top. I just don't use as much of the orange and pink color since the area here is darker. So let me just fast forward to the eye. Now normally when working on a size this big, there is room for detail in the eye, but since bears have small eyes in comparison to their heads, this isn't really the case here. So you'll fill this up with some dark brown, black and a light grey. After blending this out, I'll use black again to darken up the edges. I'll also put in some blue in the eyelids as to give them a little bit more life and then I'll use that light grey again to add in the highlight. I also used it to add in that detail in the left corner as well as to up the highlight in the eye itself. It's interesting that blobs and dots of colors can look like certain features without actually having to be drawn. Finally, I'll start on the last part of this bear. I'm using a little bit of orange underneath the chin and on the side, as well as on the top part of the ear. This is where the lightest and warmest parts will be. For the rest, I'll just mix the brown that I used already and black. You'll also notice that my strokes here are much larger. That's because the fur that will go on top there is also larger or longer. And to get this across, you already have to start building this in your first layers. You'll also notice that the fur isn't as orange once you blend it out. This is because it mixes with the surrounding values and mutes this down. The only area where I really wanted some brightness was on top of the ear and to achieve that I had to put some bright orange. Then it's time to build the fur. I work from left to right and so I'll first start with this orange section. I'll use an orangey brown that matches the section. Again, watch out for the curve of the fur. For instance, below the chin it's very important to get that curve right to get in the right depth. Where the two sections meet, I add in some darker colors that I also used on the left side. This will make for a smoother transition between the two and then I will use some ivory for my top layers. Then I'm going to move over a little bit more to the right side. As I'm doing this, if you're still here so far in this video, I can only assume that's because you like this video so far. If so, why not subscribe to my channel and be in the loop of my content. Just like the ivory on the left side, I will also want to add some here. There is some fur over here that is a bit more spread out. As such, I'm trying to get this across by adding these lines that point away from each other. This results in a darker value in the center getting this look across. There is also some of the ivory underneath the chin. I actually use this color a lot in this drawing as it really helps to get this light shine in without being too harsh. Of course, in these final layers I'm not adding a massive amount, just enough to make it brighter in some areas. 
the ear is brighter and as such I will adjust the colors here. I'm using that orangey brown for the top part around the ear and also to add in a little bit of stray hair inside. Now as I mentioned this is a very bright part so I will take out the brightest colors I've used so far. The bright ochre, I'm repeating the process from the other colors but less. There is no need to put on as much here since the color is much stronger. Then of course to mute this back down a little bit I'll add in some ivory. A thing you also may have noticed throughout this drawing is that I don't blend as much with my fingers throughout the layers. In most of my videos you will see me do this quite a lot. A reason why I blend fur out with my fingers is to mute the sharpness for each individual string of fur you might see. Now normally this is necessary since I tend to work on smaller sizes for my videos, A4 being the max size that I use. When things are smaller they get more compressed and you tend to see the picture as a whole more than you notice the details. But since I'm working on a larger scale, this time I don't find it necessary to do this. Yes, in some areas you see the strings a little bit better, but for me personally, I think it works. By now I have already started with the pinkish brown color to fill up my fur some more, which is kind of bringing this drawing to an end. As you can see, the strands are quite long here and have a minimal curve to them. You can also see that the lighter you go, the less you add them. And in areas where I felt it needed to be a little bit more dark, I just went back in with my black to darken it up. For the final touches I will just look where I need to add some more highlights or if needed shadows. It's easier to do this in the end stage of your drawing since you have the entire drawing to your disposal, making it easier to judge your values. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and I also have a lot of other videos on my channel that might interest you, so definitely check them out. Next Friday I'll be back with another video, see you then and in the meantime I hope you have a great week.